Hi, everybody. Welcome to the QB School. I'm JT O'Sullivan. Today, NFL Draft Analysis, Jacob Eason. Transferred from Georgia, Washington, coming out early. Massive arm. We're doing one game, every single pass play. I think this will be a great video. Hopefully, you all enjoy it. Let's get it started. Welcome to the QB School. <laughs> All right, if you dig this kind of content and you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel, hit the bell, get the notifications when we go live, when we put out new content. I really appreciate the support for the channel. It means a lot to me. Thank you so much. All right, Jacob Eason, burst the ducks, homecoming, score some points here. This would be a good video to see. Some really huge splash plays. Some really wish you could have it back. But man, right out the gate, just showing off his cannon. Just quick out to the field. Rock and fire. Absolute laser. I mean, the guy has a pure howitzer on his arm. And it's going to get you out of a lot of jams, especially at this level. This thing explodes off his arm. Throwing quick outs to the field. No easy task. I will say that we'll see this a handful of times for me. I don't love this footwork. I know it's going to be a little nitpicky, but this little bounce at the back for me this is just catch and throw one step catch throw to me that's toesy and then he almost resets it it's almost like a catch and reset for the th quick game and i know he gets away with it and he's got such a strong arm maybe it doesn't matter but i think it does come back to matter and really it matters on the last play of the game just super nuanced though detailed that you might not get you know all the time in the college level big play action Take a shot. He does a nice job of getting the ball down. Now, he also has a number of drops. Like, I'm not going to do a full quantitative analysis on how many drops he has. But watching him throw, he just can't pull the string. What I mean by that is he has a hard time changing velocity. This is a laser to a check down. Yeah, should he catch it? Yes. Now, I would love to see his offhand on his stomach right here to really have detailed kind of ball handling that you'll see with elite guys right there. That offhand on his stomach. Whatever. Not a huge deal. Come back, but you got to be able to pull the string. You can't throw. I mean, you got to understand who you're throwing to here. Running backs, yes, he needs to catch it. Yes, he needs to catch it with his hands. But to me, a guy who has a massive arm, who has a lot of drops, it usually means that he can't change speeds, that he only throws fastballs. And so when you don't have a full arsenal or all your clubs in your bag, you can't come out there and, you know, always hit a driver off the tee. You got to be able to come out there and have different clubs available to throw different throws. This is a bummer for me, and this is really the first of a few of these. This is just a scissors concept up top, and I don't know exactly how they're calling it or what they're reading in here, but this is a straight-up quarters beater on every team. So you're going to come up here and just hit this thing to the post. You're going to come out here and have a second vertical go into the corner or to the out. Now they look like they're in some variation of 4-2-5, but the essence of this thing, I think they end up getting to what I'm going to call quarter-quarter half over here, quarter quarter and when you get this scissors concept meaning you get a post and a corner and you're going to cause them to make a switch and usually the corners underneath that you're going to put this safety whoever it is i think it ends up being this guy that safety in a bind and if he doesn't cover either then you're going to put this corner in a bind and if this corner decides to spin or baseball turn to cover the corner this post is going to be a big winner and it's usually the post is alerted and then you read this thing one to two meaning Post alert, one to the corner, and then you usually have a flat. And it's really just a variation of flood more than anything else. But that scissors element or switch, whatever you want to call it. And this is a big miss on the post. Now, they get there a different way. They basically are clouding it. You know, almost like a three-cloud push. You know, I don't care how they determine it. There's, it's run, They're running a variation of quarters up top. That corner or the deep third player to the top of the field, he turns like that, you have to throw the post. That is a touchdown. Now, to me, he gets rid of it a little early. Now, we'll see it from the back end. His right tackle is getting imploded in his face. But there's no excuse for me when I'm evaluating a quarterback. This is a missed touchdown. So come out. You're reading that scissors right there. He's already throwing the check down. I mean, for real. Look at the lane to throw the scissors. It does. You could drive a car through that. Now, I get it. His right tackle is getting blown up, but he's not getting hit. This vision is wide open. Scissors, throw the post, touchdown. You're throwing check down. Yeah, it's third and 15. Yeah, your coach might have beat into your head a completion on third down. 
is always fine. Well, it's not when you miss a touchdown. That's a touchdown to the post, and that's a big miss for me. That's a vision thing. Now, you never know what they could be saying in the quarterback room. And I, and I know that 70 right here, the right tackle, gets absolutely evaporated. And that's a bummer. But that's a massive window to throw. He can't tell he's getting trucked right there. You got to step up and chuck that thing 50 yards in the air for a touchdown, a walk-in touchdown. Now, you sure hope there's better pass pro, but throwing checkdowns on third and 15 when you're missing touchdowns down the field is a recipe to get smoked. So we're a handful of plays in. Love to come back the next series here. They run in a handful of times. Like having a quarterback who's not afraid to stick his nose in there. You know, quarterback sneaks. I always think Tom Brady is the best ever at that. But again, we're throwing the ball hard, showing off our arm strength, but we're missing throws. Big play action shot. This is an amazing throw. It really is. We'll see it a handful of different ways. It's even better from the back end. But this is just an over. And that defender, as soon as he turns right there, the one I'm talking about, I'm take it all the way back. So that inside linebacker, the guy who's on the point here, for the bunch is going to be coming up and running essentially an over route. He's going to go under, over, and come over to almost to the logo. This defender is going to come up on the run fake, and when he turns to run, he's got his back turned. When they a defender has their back turned, the only thing they cover is the width of their shoulders. You just throw it right up on their face. Don't even worry about it. You throw it like he's not even there. And there's someone right at his feet. He can't step into it. That's a phone boost throw back in the day, and that's a strike. You got to catch it. Now, that's not a drop because the defender recovers and makes a really nice play on the ball. Again, I think the back is going the wrong way here. But look at that throw with the footwork off angle. Just flick it. Look at that thing. Right to the 12. Go up and get it. 35 sticks his hands in there and makes a better play on defense. But that is a dime. Really nice throw. Off platform, one of my favorite throws of the game here. Now, I'm not going to lie. I'm a fan of Bush Hamden, a buddy of Bush Hamden. I know he's not at UW anymore, but I didn't. I don't know if it's him or Petey calling the plays. I'm a big fan of Peterson as a former Davis guy, Davis quarterback, but I do not love all the shifts that they do. It's hard to watch. I think it's hard to play quarterback in that system. Again, they love these slants and got to have it downs. It's tough to run slants if you just look up top at the leverage of the DB when inside leverage all the time. He's going to beat him there. Again, I talk about Eason's footwork a little bit. To me, it's just a little bit sloppy. And what I mean by that is it's never clean. It's always a catch and a bounce right here. That's the best it is. To me, he's still a little toesy. You know, his back heels, his, those back cleats are not in the ground now. You know, I'm also not a fan of all five offensive linemen cutting like this, but whatever gets their hands down, well, that's right on the body. Really nice throw. He's athletic, and he can spin it and chuck it when it's as hard as he can fastball. But again, we're shifting, motioning, down inside the red area. You know, to me, this is a this is another one of those plays I wish he could have back. To me, it's decision making and vision. He's throwing this fade up top no matter what. He says, I got my guy, I got my matchup, I'm gonna catch it and throw it no matter what. And I'm all for the aggressiveness. But when you come out and your guy is getting jacked at the line of scrimmage, right there, now the ball's already when you make that decision to throw, to me, that's not a win. You gotta throw that either back shoulder or not at all. And you know, and in, in hindsight, it's gonna be not at all for me. Back shoulder here, if there's any sort of space, you want to back shoulder that thing. If he gaps him or wins at the line of scrimmage, gets on top and stacks the defender, meaning he has the leverage to the corner, then you throw that thing to the fade. But for me, this is a double bummer because not only does he not win on the perimeter, he then throws a never in history ball. And then in addition, the number two on this read, and I'm going to almost guarantee that that's the number two. So we're going to go here. Fade, if you like it, throw it. If not, you're going to have these two crossers. And really, we want the crosser to the field, the underneath guy on most of these crossers. So right here, this tight end coming across the field, he's got a chance to score. So just get through your reads. Don't force it. Don't automatically pre-snap decide, I'm going to chuck it up no matter what. You know what I'm saying? So watch the ball here. Watch the read. Again, it's up top. He doesn't win. Get it down. The tight end is going to walk in. 
or at least have a collision in the end zone. But that thing is out of bounds. That thing is almost outside the white. Never in the hist history of football has a ball been thrown out of bounds and completed. So again, just watch 87, the left tight end. If we were to say no to the fade, he comes right into our vision. Whoop, right there. Mm. That's what people are talking about when they evaluate a quarterback and say, hey, it doesn't look like he gets through his reads. There you go. Just catch and throw and making determinations pre-snap, not getting post-snap confirmation. Please help support the channel by using the code THEQBSCHOOL the next time you use SeatGeek. Get $20 off your first purchase. Again, use the code THEQBSCHOOL, SeatGeek. I appreciate it. Let's get back to the video. So now we're into third down. I love this play. They run this a bunch. He does a great job. Now he is getting through his read. So come back again with a really similar concept as far as the mesh. And what I mean by the mesh is I mean that there's usually a guy over the top and a guy coming back underneath. So this is the mesh concept to me. Now a bunch of different people run a bunch of different variations and you can do all sorts of stuff when you get to this point. But let's just say that this is the mesh over the top, underneath. We're gonna get another pick out here. This guy usually has a zone area where he can hook up and then we're gonna call this, this rail or bullet shot right here. And the way that this play is usually read is one to this rail or bullet two to this shallow underneath here, this guy coming across right there, to the guy who ends up getting the ball, and then this three, and this kind of creates that invert triangle that a lot of offenses are always trying to get to. So there, he does a really nice job. Says no to the tailback, which I think, you know, depending on how they teach it, you could put it on him right there, but I see why no, you're not gonna lead him into a collision. Right back to the shallow, right on him, beautiful. That's excellent, getting through it, but it's not consistent. It's every other play, it's every third play at least to start this game. Again, we'll see the tailback come out to his left. That's the first read. No. Then that guy right underneath the shallow comes back. Perfect timing. One to two. Really nice. Now we want to see you do it consistently. Fourth down and short. We're just going to run option. Love it. Get in there. He's athletic enough to run the option. You know, I don't think anybody's going to, you know, say he's got quick feet but I think he's athletic and coordinated enough to be a threat when he has to be, especially in short yardage. We've seen the sneak. We've seen the load option now or the speed option. Now we're an empty four by one. Looks like quarters. You know, this looks like a variation of sp spacing to me, which I'm not a huge fan of. Maybe it'll be my next video for because people give me a hard time about only doing plays I like. Spacing, he does, does a nice job right here. I'll show from the back end. The thing I like the best about this little sit over the ball is where he puts the ball, the ball location. Now, yes, it's the easiest throw in football, this little sit over the ball. But again, you got to throw it away from the near defender. So you don't want to put it on the 87's left shoulder. You want to put it on his right shoulder. Boom, he turns up away from the near defender. And that's the nuance and detail in a passing game. It's not just throwing it and playing catch. We're putting it away from defenders, away from common color, to space, to grass. Now we're in bunch, three by one, middle field closed, play action shot. And this is a massive throw and an unbelievable catch and throw 50 yards in the air, just a beautiful chuck. And you know, I love the fact they're taking shots with play action. Got every pass in this tape, big fake. From the other 45 to the other side of the five, over 50 yards in the air, just an absolute strike. And this is taking advantage of his arm strength, what he brings to the table. Not everybody can make this throw. Again, just crazy detail. Watch his off arm, not on his stomach. If you're playing defense, you know you can see, you know where the ball is. But this ability to chuck that thing and drop it on a dime in the bucket, right in stride, really beautiful. Unbelievable throw, NFL throw. Just high level football, throwing the ball from the pocket at a play action. NFL guys are going to love that drive it down the field again another little play action screen nice play calling showed good touch timing kind of changes arm angle a little bit here you don't see a whole lot of from him offensively though we're shifting we're motioning and i get it uh, it's in vogue you know with with a lot of what shanahan's doing but it's hard for me every single time. It's hard to play quarterback, in my opinion, getting a rhythm with those type of offenses. Again, I love the fundamentals. Eyes downfield, drift to the side of the screen, little quick little flip, really nice, accurate, quick toss. Nice job by the big guys there. 
getting out in front, leading a caravan convoy. Okay, we're motioning two by two, 12 personnel, big play action shot. You know, this is what I think most people would call some variation of like Yankee or NCAA. All it is is a post up top with an over by the number two, the tight end to the bottom. I'm not sure what's happening at the bottom of the screen. She's getting jacked. Again, he he throws these checkdowns, and I don't take anything away from throwing checkdowns. They're usually a good idea. But I just I I would want if I was coaching him, I would say, man, you could really hang on this over a little bit. Now the post probably isn't there. Post not usually a great play versus middle field closed play action shot. You know this guy, depending on how they play this, if they don't invert replace this, meaning if he just gets depth and he doesn't drive the over then you're probably not going to be able to throw that big post. But if you give this guy time to get over here, there's really nobody over in this area because this corner, as long as that corner has run with the post, which he has, you got all this space to leave this over to. And especially in a play action where you got seven man protection, depending on what they're bringing, you know, if you know they're not only rushing four, you're going to have time to make that throw. Now it's not there. There, it just isn't because the guy's running the over, in my opinion, too shallow. I would want him to get to the bottom, to the right of that logo for Alaska. You know, he's running at the bottom of the logo of Alaska. If he takes that thing a little bit higher, there's a little bit more grass to work with. Either way, you know, hard to argue about getting down to the check down. It's just not consistent for me as far as the timing of it. Right here, he gets it right. The over's not there. The post isn't there. Get it down. You know, the other thing you could do is try to make a play with your with your feet. You know, if you think that 41 is just going to catch and tackle right there, which he does, wouldn't be bad. Wouldn't be mad about just coming out and scrambling and trying to make something happen with your feet. Now, you don't see him do that a lot because he's probably not quick enough afoot to be able to make a living off of that. But there is a time and a place for everybody with that. Here, all bad. I like watching plays like this just to see the hustle and kind of the football IQ. You know, are you making a terrible play, a disaster, or are you, you know, picking up after your teammate's mistake right here? And right here, he does everything right. Gets on it, curls around it, can tell he's been coached, kind of hand, how to handle a disaster. Because if you play quarterback long enough, they are going to happen. There's just no way around it. So we're shifting to bunch. We're motioning to four by one. Quarters. You know, not even quarters. Yeah, I guess quarters. Lock on the backside. To me, this is a bad decision. So, you know... I, you could make the argument here that this is getting to borderline middle field closed, you know, almost like a three week or some people would call a six, you know, depending on what you think that top safety is doing. But to me, you know, it's it's hard to play quarters versus four by one, but I guess you could. To me, he's playing right, right, right there. This guy's coming, you know, down or hanging just because he's not threatened vertically. He might have his eyes actually over here to the three or the four. Either way, you can't throw a slant to this look. It's a, that's an ambulance shot. And so again, to me, the vision is, is a question mark at best. You know, I, I just don't understand why I do this. Now, again, I hate spacing and this is a spacing play. What I mean by spacing, just so everybody's all on the same page is, is spacing is usually tethered with a slant. It doesn't have to be, it can be usually a quick game throw to the one side, and then you're going to get a sit over the ball a hitch and a flat. And then usually there isn't four guys out here, but that that's the essence of spacing. And all you do is read it right across the board. One, two, three, four. And so the last time you threw it to the sit over the ball, I don't love spacing ever because I think it's only a zone play. But you know, if you got a guy who just wins on slants and they're playing one-on-one, -on -one, go for it. But you know, anytime you're gonna get any sort of like matchup like this underneath where they're they're trying to switch this off and play man, it's gonna be tough. Almost like a one lurk or eleven lurk there. Just a just a really to me, this is a, a poor decision. And, and he's fortunate he didn't get his guy hurt. Again, footwork wise, it's just a it's you know, I don't know. Just like when you're putting your back foot in the ground like that, to me, that isn't lined up to throw a slant. Now, he might be strong enough to be able to rotate over there and just rip it because he is, but it's going to be hard to be consistently good throwing the ball from the pocket unless your feet aren't lined up to where you're supposed to go. 
So third and nine, another uh, poor play here, on my opinion. And, you know, it's it's now becoming like a pattern for some of these things. Now, is this, this is really just run up to the sticks, third and nine, and turn around for four guys. No, who knows how exactly they're calling this, but this is what this is. Third and nine, run up to the sticks, turn around. Run past the sticks, turn around. To me, this is the opportunity. He misses an opportunity to show an NFL throw. First thing I want to talk about is just the read. So all these guys, here's the first down marker right here. So the 40. So the, the read here for me is when I've run this play is that you want to read this thing basically outside in because the outside routes happen first. But when you get a cloud corner, meaning a rolled corner, this thing's almost always convert into goes. You sure don't want to come up outside release and then wrap inside a cloud corner because all you're going to do is bring that cloud corner in to the number two, which is exactly right here. So this guy straight up to me is 100% wrong. Now, they could be coaching him to do that, but I, I can't imagine that they are. So really the read here, anytime you get this type of cloud up top, is going to be inside one, and then this guy's going to have a lot more space to be able to come back and run two. So really it's one to two. And to me, this throw right here is NFL open. I would love to have seen him throw this throw. We'll see it here. Watch it a handful of times. First, let's watch the guy up top because I think he really jacks the whole concept by his route being able to go outside and then in. If he were to just run a go, that number two is now more open. I still don't think he's the throw, but when he comes back in up top as the number one, it muddles the whole thing. It's a disaster. It's poor execution. But now let's watch. Let's pretend that outside number one were to go outside vertical and do the play correctly. Now we're going to go from the number two up top to the number three. And the number three, look at the space he has. So from the back end, we'll really be able to see it. That's open in the league. When he comes out of it, is 100% open, a third down throw you have to make a living on in the NFL. So we'll watch him come in. He's going to collision. I'm going to guess 41. There it is. Right there. That's open in the NFL. You throw that ball. You know where your guy's going. You put that ball right here. He can catch, probably break a tackle, and get an even bigger play. They might, you might even get a flag there with a hold, but you come in, extend off of him, hopefully push off at the hip, not at the shoulder from the offensive player, and you know your guy's coming out this way, and you anticipate it, put that thing right there. Instead, you're throwing a contested ball after someone has had a mental error and run the wrong route on the perimeter, and it's all bad. But you can see all that space. That's 10 yards of space right there between the next defender. Just put it right on one, give him a chance. Now you got 15 doing his own thing, and you got a disaster. Now we're in the next series. Motion into two by two. Middle field closed. Man, just a little shallow route. I like it right on him. Shows good accuracy in these underneath throws. Obviously, you would hope just about any quarterback at this level would have good accuracy at those throws, but he does. Again, this is a little bit better for me getting through his reads. You can tell he's going starting left. He's lined up to throw to the left. Comes back. Doesn't get all the way around, but gets his upper body all the way around and doesn't throw. You know, that's a batting practice ball. That's not a fastball. And that was right on him. It's the best. I've seen of him have been able to change the miles per hour on the ball, change the tempo of the ball. Three by one, middle field closed, man. Got this big over coming by the number three down here to the bottom of the screen. Nice job hanging with it. Good vision, be able to see it. You know, not a perfect ball, a little low, but still nice catch. Would love to see a little bit more accuracy out of this type of throw, especially with nobody around you. You know, just a little low, you know, if, that, if that's up on his face, super accurate, he might break that tackle, keep running. That's a difference apart when you talk accuracy at this level, at every level. Again, nice job getting through his reads. Now, there's no huge winner here. You got like little stop routes on the outside with seam routes inside. If you don't like it, which I probably would like the up top route if I was working the up top route. I'm not sure why he wouldn't throw it. If for some reason you were working the seam inside and then number two gets jacked vertically, I could see why you come down to the check down. But for me, he's getting through these things fast. It's not on time. For me, it's okay. 
this this route versus middle field close, you either take your poison, you pick your poison. You're going to work the seams, or you're going to throw the outside stop. If you pick the seams, you're probably coming to the check down just like this. If you pick the outside stop, especially up top, you're probably throwing the outside stop. You don't know what they're asking him to do though. But again, find a completion, throw a check down. Hard to argue about that. You know, to me, a little toesy, you know, especially when you're a, a giraffe back there at 6'6, you don't have to do that. Just get a normal throwing platform. And then he relies on not being lined up so much that I, I think it's just hard to be consistently accurate if you're always just relying on your arm to turn and rip it. Next, two by two. Again, the same play I drew up earlier with the little rail, the mesh, and the zone beater over the top. Now this time, a little miscommunication is behind him. You know, makes a nice catch. Really nice catch, but that's the same play. That little rail bullet to the back. It's the first read. Then that crosser underneath coming right to you. Boop. You know, and just to throw, you would hope someone wouldn't miss from that's 10, that's 10 yards. That's a 10 yard throw and it's behind him. And he does a nice job catching it. He's under control enough to be able to catch it, but I don't know. Definitely nowhere near, you know, elite accuracy through the first part of this game. Three by one middle field closed man taking a shot. Everybody's running these inside goes now fades. Again, I love this throw. Give him a chance to make a play. Sure enough, he catches it. Don't throw that sucker out of bounds. Really nice. Really nice. One of my favorite throws, besides for that wide open 50-yard bomb post. It's a nice one. And that over where the guy's back was turned. But this is, this is playing football in the league. He's covered. You throw him open. Low back shoulder, up and down. Give your guy a chance. Defender can't cover it. First and five inside the red zone. A little bunch. It's just math right here playing quarterback. They got We have three to the boundary, to the bottom. They have two. Catch and throw. Make one guy miss to the house. They're late adjust. Can't get off blocks. Nice job. Good accuracy. Watch how fast he gets it over there. I love it. No laces. You know, chance for a disaster, really, with the way that the back is coming this way. A lot of teams in these RPO situations where if you know you're going to throw this thing, you'll have a call between these two. So say you say no or whatever, pass. Then he just comes up and takes himself out of it. When he comes in to the quarterback's lane here to run this inside zone or whatever they're running this way, you watch the feet. They're really fortunate not to hit each other or jack this exchange. This is a difficult throw. There's nothing easy about this throw. See how he can't step? I mean, that's a no step, no lace. Hard as it gets. He does a nice job. Throws it firm out there, strong, right on him. Touchdown. And you're up 7 nothing against a really good Oregon. Motion. Two by two. Middle field closed. Zone. Uh, zone or match. Can't tell what they're doing underneath. Either way, we're back to that shallow. It's just old school shallow cross. Nice job getting it on him, getting it to his playmakers. Let him run. Pump return left. See him coming right for, right to left. See his footwork here. You know, this is just me. I don't love the left fall step. I, I know, you know, some people teach it. I don't understand it. It's just wasted motion right here, this left fall step. But unless you're in the room, you don't know exactly what they're thinking. Either way, pretty good. You know, I just don't. And I, I get it. And y'all can get on me for being over nuanced here. But this little hop at the back of his drop, see that? Just that little weird reset to the left. To me, that's unnecessary and, and not clean. There's just no reason to do it. So if you have a, you're only taking three steps, but in reality, you're taking a left false step, an extra step. So now you're taking four steps and now you're hopping. So you take a false step and a hop. Like, you know, I wouldn't be happy with our high school quarterbacks doing this. So I can't imagine, you know, that Bush Hamden was happy with this. And I get it. He's a transfer. But it's it's not clean. This is a straight up missile. Running a variation of what looks like duo or 
trio, maybe even call it. Run game wise, little RPO. You like it one on one. This throw is a touchdown. This guy obviously makes the corner miss, but this is a straight up howitzer up top. Whoom! Right around that poor defender and no chance trying to catch that thing. And his arm was the reason this thing scores. Because this technically probably should be an incompletion. Just gonna get three triple team, three double teams going left, right to left. Boom. Look at that thing. See how he gets all his cleats in the ground right here? Boom. That's nice. That's really nice. Nice catch. Nice finish, too. Love it. RPOs. Tough to defend. So now we motion shift to bunch. Middle field closed. Looks like man. Looks like they get confused. Who's got the point man on the bunch? Nobody knows. Again, another variation of mesh down here. With the wide receivers. Friendly fire. Nice job finding the tight end. Love it when quarterbacks take advantage of missed assignments by the by the defense. Now, I will say I'm not a huge fan of, of the way that they have their running backs blocking. I know this one specifically, everybody runs this where the offensive line all goes one way, all to the right. Back comes out, a little power pass and chops that guy's thigh. Okay. I still, it's hard to play quarterback when you got people at your feet like that. I just You can see his reaction when he throws it, kind of jumps back. This is a nice throw. Guy's wide open on a corner. You throw it right at him. And he's got enough arm strength to be able to do it with someone right at his feet and jump backwards. Recoil, as Farb used to say. We're up seven. Third quarter. Five minutes left. Fourth and one. False start. Great hard count. Again, I'm not going to bash what they were doing offensively, but they were doing this like wildcat thing on third down where they took Easton out of the game. For a number of snaps that I didn't love, it's hard to take out a, a you know an early round NFL quarterback draft choice. Here's another example of running back pass pro that I'm not a fan of getting trucked, and this is an absolute disaster of a play for the quarterback. Okay, so this is I got all sorts of issues with this, specifically just throwing it like a blind you know prayer down the middle of the field. This should be a pick. You can see the DB's reaction here. Is it a linebacker? Yeah. Or a lineman. Someone falls out that probably should make a play on this ball. But this to me starts with pass pro. And that's why these that's why it's hard to talk. It's hard to evaluate just a quarterback without understanding the context of what they're asking him to do. So how we're blocking this to me is an issue. And and it's not necessarily who's blocking who or the fact that the left tackle is blocking no one. That happens sometimes in football. But if you come up here and you are going this low at running back. And trying to like chop someone as opposed to you got to come up there and eat that with your face mask and blunt him. But when you go down like this and have someone at your feet, you can't make a bad play worse from the quarterback. This footwork, you can't throw that ball. You just can't. That ball should be picked by whoever that 41. Now he's not looking at the quarterback right there. He takes his eyes off of him. 41, I'm talking about the defender. But if you were looking at the quarterback, this is picked. Because this is a this is a bad play. Bad, bad, all sorts of bad. That's a, you know, that's a bummer on many levels. You can see 23. That should be a pick. He knows it. So you've made enough plays to have the lead here, but now all of a sudden things aren't going your way. Again, nice call. You know, third and long here. They're going to call a little quick screen, get it out. He's shown he's really accurate with those things and dang near get the first down here. On a safe throw. Again, I love how quick he can get it out of his hands. Right on him. Nice job for a big guy. Not the easiest thing in the world to do. It really isn't. It's a lot easier to your left than it is to your right if you're right-handed. But still, not easy to do. Now we're in the fourth quarter. Let's see what the score is. So we're up three. Meaning the Huskies are up three. We're shifting to two by two because we shift in motion every play. Again... You know, I don't know how they classify this. Is if is this this is, looks to me this is almost like three double cloud, or almost like a Tampa two invert. I don't care what you say. It it's cover three because there's three guys deep. But that middle third player is almost like a tweener, like a hole player. I'm sure there's a term for it. 
this to me is a bummer. Okay, this is now like the second time or third time that he's missed what I think is a straight up touchdown. So this to me is all vision. So right here, he's going to come up here and for lack of a better word, we're going to call this a Dino. This is a post corner post. And when you call a route like this, everybody in the huddle knows that this is where the ball is going to go. We're going to try to take a shot. They're going to rush. I want to say three here. There's not a lot of defenders. You got all sorts of time. I want to say he takes a five. Either if you take a three, two big hitches, this thing is a touchdown. And the way that if you come up and you're running this triple move route, it's almost like Mighty Ducks, like the triple deke. And if it's one-on-one, -on -one, you're going to ride this thing out and get a chance to chuck it because this is a walk-in touchdown. Whoop. Boom. Oh, goodness. I mean, he's got this guy in all sorts of trouble right there. He's not in a backpedal. He's not running. Talking about this wide receiver at the bottom, but we've already thrown the check down. Like, how do you throw a check down? There's nobody around you. They're rushing three. Like, this is just infuriating. As anybody who's ever called plays, this must drive someone crazy. This is a touchdown. The check down has it, and the wide receiver is wide open. Just an absolute brum bummer. I'm going to run it back one more time. We're calling it to throw the Dino at the bottom of the screen. One, two, three, hitch, 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 throw it. We're throwing checkdowns on second and long. Look at the look at the defensive coach down here at the bottom. He's just going crazy. Should just be a touchdown the other way. Oh, I mean, stuff like this makes is is more concerning to me than any missed throw. You know, they're rushing three. You got to know they're they're dropping eight, and we get the perfect look. We got it. That's a touchdown, bro. Look at that route. Oh my god. Brutal. That's how you lose. So now we've missed two of those. And that's how you lose a game. That's how they lost this game. That's not the direct reason, but it's one of the reasons. You leave 14 points out on the field, especially when you got a guy who can throw it this far. you got to take chances like that. Now we're running just four vertical variation. Looks like a four verticals with a shallow down here at the bottom. One, two, three. Can't tell if it was dropped or not. Let me see. Whoa. Yeah, I mean, it's dropped, but he throws the ball so damn hard. You know, the guy's kind of grabbing him a little bit too. But again, at some point when you have all these drops, yeah, he's grabbing them. But if it's not called, it's not a penalty. You know, you just have to be able to change the tempo of the throw. And I don't know if he can. I was around enough guys who throw it hard enough where some guys can't change the tempo of how they throw. They just throw hard. Big play action shot again. Great job getting out of the pocket, showing some vision down the field, not panicking, not throwing the ball away. Again, this is, people make this look easy because you see it a lot on Sundays, but this is not easy. Big play action, not there. Someone's in your face. Bail, reset, find somebody, put it on them. Now, that was wide open, but still, you got to go out there and do it. And it's nice to be able to watch the film and see he has the capacity to do this. Not might not be the fastest guy in the world, but he's got a little savviness to him. Get out, reset, and a strong enough arm to rip it. It's demoralizing to a defense. But now you got to come back and make these type of plays consistently. Now we're down four. Right? Four minutes left to go in the game. Third and five. Massive down. Motion two by two. Middle field closed. That double cloud thing. This is really just old school Tampa 2. Getting there a different way. Again, you know, I, I just don't love the scheme. If this is supposed to be a sluggo up top, maybe. You know, but to me, this is, this is not great on the quarterback or the scheme, depending on what you want to see. So to me, this looks like they're trying to run sluggo with like a little whip thing up top. So right here, we're going to come up, run the slant, and go sluggo. Well, versus cloud, you're going to get pushed inside. This second route here, this little in and out, whip, arrow, whatever you want to call it, you read this thing one to two. But usually there's a cloud adjust where you want this sluggo to go outside. So up quick. And then outside, because you want that corner at worst to turn his back and push you to the sideline so you have more time to work this little whip arrow. But when you go inside, 
on the sluggo and bring the corner to the second read, now you've intentionally closed this hole right here to this whip where the ball ends up going. And you're fortunate that this isn't a bigger collision. This was 10 years ago. This thing's an emergency room. You know, now it's just a tackle. And it's for a first down. But again, for me, you know, is that scheme? Is that reads? You know, they still got a first down. But it's hard to live like that. It's hard to live in that world. Boom. And that could have been a bad, nasty hit. I, I just don't love quarterbacks that throw guys into what should be bad hits. I want people to protect people on the perimeter. And then again, this is just an absolute disaster. It's second and six. How much time is left? Less than three minutes. I'm going to say borderline, like just under three minutes, 250. We're going to come out second and six. You First of all, I'm not sure why they ran it on first down, which they did. Then they're in 12 personnel. Not sure why. And they're fake running. You know, the play action is not going to necessarily work here. But again, you know, you, you just can't take a sack. You can't take a sack. You got to have some football IQ. Now, again, I don't think you should have, be having your back eight yards deep blocking someone who's running through the A-gap free. You know, but that's just me. But again, play action, coaching, play calling, concept, you know, how you're teaching. When most people would tell you that when this guy, when this guy, and what I mean by this guy is 35, when he walks up, and I wish he was just a tick closer, most rules are when you're in the feet of the defender, of the frontline defender, it becomes a squeeze call, which most teams will squeeze this guy down and the back will then come a little bit wider just to give it the back a little bit better chance. But there's no reason to be eight yards off the ball. Where's the ball? Like, for what? Because you're going to run it? Get up and pass protect and get this guy blunted right here. Don't come up and cut him so then all the quarterback sees is flying feet. But then it's on the quarterback. You're outside the pocket. You got to throw this ball away. You have to throw it away. You cannot take a sack. Now, that's just being slow and trying to do a, you know, double mick twist flippy thing. Damn. I mean, that's a bad play. It's a bad play on many different levels. So now it's third and 23. We'll just come down here and rip an in route to the bottom of the screen. And this is what he does. And it's beautiful. And it's an NFL throw. But the consistency and the vision and the touch, you know, it's, it's difficult. So similar thing here, pass pro wise. Now we got the tight end coming in. He's blocking 35. He gets across. He doesn't cut him, just pushes him around enough. And we can just shuffle to our left, keep our vision down the field and rip it in. And that's a laser. That's a great throw. Great vision. Nice pass pro. That's what you want to see the most of. Now it's fourth and three, fourth and for the game. What are you going to call? They want to get to the slant game. Come down here. We're going to rip a slant. Again, for me, I don't love the footwork. I don't know if I love the call, you know, spot and slant. Uh, I'm guessing the read is, man, you got to throw the slant zone. You throw the spot. But but I don't love it. I really like fourth and for the game. I don't, I don't love that at all. But that's more of a knock on the play caller than it is the quarterback execution. I will tell you, watch his footwork again. I just don't like it. What I mean by that is that little hop one and hop, that's an extra step. Like, I know it might seem like, oh, it doesn't matter. It matters when you're throwing routes at full speed underneath 10 route, ten yards for the game. I told you the first play of the game I didn't like it, and now it's the last play of the game, and everything's on the line, and I think it's late. It's just a tick late, and that's the difference between winning and losing and being a first-round guy and a third-round guy. Again, to me, Tozy at the back, he's not lined up. Right here, he's not lined up to throw. So he's got to take another hop step to get lined up. Now he's late. And yeah, is the ball on him? No, it's not. It's not accurate. It's not good enough to win. And that's what you see right here for the game, for the win. This is what they're going to go to. All right, that's a wrap. Jacob Eason, a lot to like. Massive arm. Made some huge NFL-type throws. But I think that there are a number of things that uh, are going to have him fall from the top tier of quarterback, especially in this draft with some guys at the top that have separated themselves. And so for me, it always starts from the ground up footwork wise. You know, there's some things that I'd want to see cleaned up also. And probably the most important thing for me was just the vision, you know, whether it was 
not being on the same page with the play caller and understanding the concepts or the football IQ or just straight up the vision and not understanding the timing, but missing multiple guys on what I thought were big throws down the field that he would want to throw to show off his arm, just missing completely. Now, maybe it's because the offensive line wasn't holding up all season, but for this game, there were opportunities there that were missed. And for me, that's as concerning as anything else. So let me know what you think about the video in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time.